Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. In this video, we are going to be looking at the enantioselective total synthesis of cotylenin A. The work that we will be looking at was published by the Nakata Group from the Waseda University in Tokyo. Cotylenin A was first isolated by Munakata in 1970 from a cladosporium fungal extract, and its structure wasn't confirmed until 1998, which was carried out by Cato et al. This molecule has been studied extensively, and it shows activity against several types of cancer in vitro and also in vivo when combined with an anti-epidermal growth factor receptor antibody. So let's look at the retrosynthesis. The first disconnection happens at the glycosidic bond and this produces two fragments, cotylenol and the glycoside donor. Working back from cotylenol, this was produced by hydroxylation, alkenylation and reduction and hydrolysis from this bicyclic intermediate. This intermediate was generated using a conversion synthesis coupling two reacting partners. The first partner was generated by a nitrile addition to a bicyclic compound bearing a cyclopropyl group, which in turn was generated using a catalytic asymmetric intermolecular cyclopropanation. The other coupling partner was derived from an oxidation of a cyclopentanone, which could be generated using a radical cyclization. So let's start with the synthesis of coupling partner A. This starts with a catalytic asymmetric intermolecular cyclopropanation, catalyzed by tetracus acetonitrile copper 1 hexafluorophosphate, together with a chiral bisoxazoline ligand, which are more commonly known as box ligands. This produced the target cyclopropane in an 80% enantiomeric excess after chromatography, which upon recrystallization was purified to 99% EE. In this reaction, the box ligand coordinates to the copper to create the chiral environment, and the diazo group is eliminated as dinitrogen to create the copper bound organometallic intermediate. This allows for the reaction of the alkene and the copper bound carbon center, which reacts in a concerted manner by the overlap of the carbon carbon homo orbital and the unoccupied luma orbital of the carbene. This forms the cyclopropane ring and allows the copper complex to react further. This insertion proceeded from the ray face of the carbene due to the presence of the chiral ligand, which provided control of the stereochemistry. The newly installed cyclopropane could then be opened by a cyanide nucleophile. This acts in an SN2 fashion to open the ring and form the nitrile with the inversion of stereochemistry. The radiochemistry of this reaction is driven by the electron withdrawing sulfone and carbonyl groups, which are able to stabilize the negative charge built up during the reaction. This produced the product in a 99% enantiomeric excess, with the stereochemistry confirmed by X ray crystallography. As the sulfone had now served its purpose, it could then be removed by reduction with samarium diiodide. This is a radical reducing agent which is chelated by the carbonyl and sulfone oxygens which first forms a radical at the carbonyl centre, which then moves to the alpha position, which drives the elimination of the sulfone group. Another one electron reduction is carried out by another equivalent of samarium diiodide to generate an enolate intermediate. This enolate was trapped by chlorodiethyl phosphate, which reacts with the oxygen of the enolate group. This enolate is then brominated by reaction with n-bromosuccinamide where the enolate attacks the bromonium ion to generate coupling partner A with the elimination of the phosphate group. So let's proceed to look at the synthesis of coupling partner B. This starts with an acyl radical cyclization. Tert dodecanthiol is reacted with tert butyl hydroperoxide, copper 1 chloride, and bipyridine to generate a thiol radical. This transfers the radical to the carbonyl centre which undergoes a 5-exotrig cyclization to form the cyclopentanone. 
the selectivity of this radical cyclization is governed by Beckwith's rules, which we looked at in detail in the video Rules for Ring Closure. To form the triflate necessary for the Uti-Moto coupling, the enolate was first formed using sodium HMDS, which was reacted with bis trifle aniline to form the alkene triflate. The TBS group was then deprotected using HF, and the newly revealed hydroxyl group was oxidized using des martin periodinane, which acts as a nucleophile towards the hypervalent iodine center, which makes it more electrophilic and allows deprotonation by the eliminated acetate group to generate the target aldehyde and complete the synthesis of coupling partner B. So with these two coupling partners in hand, the authors proceeded to the synthesis of cotylenol, which serves as the glycosyl acceptor in the synthesis of cotylenin A. The Uti-Moto coupling starts with the reaction of triphenyl tin hydride with triethyl borane, which generates a tin radical. This reacts with coupling partner A to abstract the bromide and leave a radical in its place, which is in equilibrium with an enolate-like species, where the radical resides on the oxygen atom. Triethyl borane reacts with this species and allows it to react as a nucleophilic enolate and attack the aldehyde of coupling partner B, forming the desired product. This process forms an ethyl radical which reacts with another equivalent of triphenyl tin hydride to eliminate ethane and reform the tin radical species. To eliminate the hydroxyl group formed by the uti coupling, the authors utilized the Burgess reagent to carry out a dehydration reaction. This reacts with the hydroxyl group and increases its ability to act as a leaving group. Intramolecular deprotonation of the alpha proton by the amide moiety eliminates the sulfate leaving group to stereoselectively produce the desired enone. Taking this enone forward, they then performed a Takai reaction. Diiodomethane is reacted with zinc dust, which undergoes an oxidative insertion, first to produce a monozinc product, and then a dizinc product, which is catalyzed by lead dichloride. Reaction of the zincylated intermediate with zirconium tetrachloride forms a zirconium carbene, somewhat analogous to Tebbs reagent. This undergoes a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition with the carbonyl center to produce a four membered ring, which then undergoes a cycloreversion to produce an alkene in a process which is very similar to the Wittig reaction. This newly formed alkene then took part in an upjohn dihydroxylation. This is a cycloaddition with osmium tetroxide, which forms a cyclic intermediate, which upon hydrolysis yields a 1 2 dihydroxyl compound. This reaction uses N methylmorpholine to regenerate the osmium tetroxide, which is used in a catalytic amount. This produces the target dihydroxyl compound in a 7 to 1 DR. These two hydroxyl groups were then orthogonally protected. The first was as a methyl ether. This was installed using the Mirwine reagent, which was selective for the primary hydroxyl group, which is more nucleophilic as it is less sterically hindered. With this installed, the compound was then reacted with TMS chloride to silate the tertiary hydroxyl group. At this stage, the authors reduced the nitrile group to reveal an aldehyde. This was done using dibal H. The addition of the hydride to the nitrile generates an imine type compound, which upon hydrolysis forms the aldehyde. This is selective as dibal is not strong enough a reducing agent to fully reduce the nitrile to an amine. The aldehyde was then converted to a ketone in a two-step process. The first step was the addition of a methyl Grignard reagent to produce a secondary alcohol, which was then reoxidized to a carbonyl group using desmartin periodinane, which we saw earlier. With this ketone installed, the authors proceeded to one of the most important steps of the synthesis. The alkenylation reaction, which forms the central eight-membered ring of cotylenol. A palladium zero catalyst first undergoes oxidative addition with the triflate group to form an organometallic intermediate. This organometallic palladium species then undergoes ligand exchange 
with potassium phenoxide in a step that is similar to that seen in the Suzuki reaction. This is a more electron donating ligand and as such increases the reactivity of the palladium. This can react with the enolate generated from the reaction of the ketone with the potassium phenoxide. Reductive elimination from this intermediate forms the target eight-membered ring and regenerates the catalyst. With the eight-membered ring now complete, the authors needed to install the alpha hydroxyl group. To do this, they utilized MOOPH. This reagent, oxodiproxymolybdenum-pyridine hexamethylphosphoric triamide, reacts with the enolate, which is generated from the reaction of the molecule with LIHMDS and transfers an oxygen atom, which upon workup yields the desired alpha hydroxyl group with a DR of 2.7 to 1. The next step was a ketone reduction. This reaction proved to be quite challenging and the authors developed a new reagent to carry it out. This reagent is tetramethyl ammonium triisocarboxylate borohydride. This reacts in a manner similar to sodium borohydride, where the hydride acts as a nucleophile to attack the carbonyl centre, which yields an alcohol upon workup. Using this bespoke reagent, the authors managed to produce the target as a single isomer. The final step was a simple deprotection with TBAF to yield the target cotylenol. That's everything from this week's Simplifying Synthesis. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and join me next week where we will look at the rest of the synthesis of cotylenin A.